before we start this video, a large thank you to Colin, Jeffrey, Rich, Willie, Hal, John, and Scampel419 for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and today we're going to make our player damage system display some kind of health when you're damaged. So, I have a few Photoshop things here I made quickly. We have one for full damage, caution, and danger. It's going to drag these in the project. I can give these to you guys. Check the description if you need them, or you can make your own. Make sure you set them to Sprite 2D and UI and click Apply. Now, uh, we're going to do the same system that Resident Evil 2 did. So when you take damage, it will give you a little heart rate monitor. So the first thing we want to do is go to our canvas and double click. Let's right click, create an empty game object. I'm just going to call this status pop-ups. Status being the status of your character when you take damage or an effect. I am then going to click this little box here, hold alt and make it the size of the canvas. And then I'm going to right click, go to UI and make a new image. I will call this first image fine with a bracket full HP, indicating that this is going to be the full HP pop-up. Usually you'll only see this when you heal yourself because when you take damage, you'll never be at full, obviously. So this will pop up after you've healed your character. I'm gonna pop up the width to 500 by 150 for width and height and put it in the bottom left corner of my UI, roughly matching the same uh, distance from the bottom as the ammo. Don't need to get it perfect, it's okay as long as it looks nice for the uh, education purposes. Next, I'm going to put in my image for UI full. I'm actually going to change the name of this now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm just gonna duplicate this for the next one uh, because I want, it, I want it to indicate how much percentage HP we're at. So um, I'm gonna call this one fine. And then I can say damaged here if I wanted to. But I'm actually gonna say 90% and then fine full HP would be 100%. And actually, I'm going to get the values from the actual Resident Evil 2 game. And I'm, I have them written down here, so let's break this down. So this is actually between 66 and 99%. And the first one is at 100% completely. The difference being this next one's a bit lighter of a green. So then I'll drag in my second image for fine, but slightly damaged. As you can see, it turns a bit lighter. Let's duplicate this again. This next one's going to be caution, which is actually checking my numbers here. I believe 30 to 65% damage total. And this is going to be a more of an orange color or a yellow color. And then finally, danger, which is anything uh, under 30% as long as you're not dead, basically. So I'm just going to say 1 to 29%. And I'm just putting these percentages in here for no real reason other than it looks neat and it's easy to see what these represent numerically. Uh, so now I'm going to drag in my danger image and there we go. So we have all these images here, but we only need to pop up one at a time. And we also need to fade them in. So how are we going to do that? Well. We're actually going to go to the status pop-ups game object and add a canvas group component. Now, as you can see here, there's an alpha component. So check this out. If I enable all these objects here, and if I lower the alpha slightly, as you can see, it just takes the alpha out of these images, which is very nice. Now, we're going to use this to our advantage, and we're going to make it fade in and fade out. So let's add a script onto this. So I'm going to call this status pop-up UI, or pop-ups UI, rather. And let's open this up and go into Visual Studios. So what we're going to want to do is first reference our canvas group component. And since this sits on the same game object as this script, we can simply say canvas group on awake is equal to get component canvas group, the name of the variable we just stated. All right, now we have to modify this group's alpha based on a timer. Um, but before we do that, I'm also going to just add another variable here. First starting with serializable field game object and i'm going to put down full actually pop underscore up uh, let me think pop up no underscores fine and what we want to do is actually get a serializable field for each of these game object pop-ups and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to enable one of these and disable the rest depending on your health and then we are going to fade in and fade out the canvas group with code so I'm just going to copy and paste all of these. Make sure you just know what they are. I'm gonna say pop up fine full, pop up fine damaged, pop up caution, and then pop up danger. This is referencing the pop up for 100% HP, 66 to 99, 30 to 65, and one to 29. Now, when this is done and you have all these variables placed in, save it, go back to your game and drag them in in the inspector. And that looks very neat and is easy to understand. All right, now that we have those dragged in, let's actually go back and start writing some code. So underneath awake, I'm going to start with a private void called disable all pop-ups. And just as the title suggests, I'm just going to simply list every one of these variables, starting with pop-up find full, then say dot set active false. 
we can use the dot set active function on, on this because the variable is a game object. So all this is doing is turning off the game object. It's setting it to false. The game object is still in the scene. It will just disable it temporarily. Do this with all of your variables. And now we're going to make a thing uh, using the code word I enumerator, which is a coroutine. We're going to call it fade in pop up. Now, if you don't know what a coroutine is, I just suggest you read it quickly and come back to this video. They're very simple to understand, but it helps to look at a couple examples. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in this coroutine is we're going to say for, as in a for loop, we're going to open up some brackets and say float fade. We're going to initialize this at 0.05f. And then we're going to put a colon here. And we're going to say if fade is less than one, fade is equal to fade plus 0.05f. Okay? And then we're going to say canvas group dot alpha is equal to fade. So basically, if the fade is less than one total, we're going to add an increment of it until it gets to one. This will fade in the image over time. And then we're going to say inside, whoops, not outside those uh, curly brackets, inside the for loop, we're going to say if fade is greater than 0.9f, what we want to do is start the fade out process after a couple of seconds. So we're going to say wait and then fade out. And then right below this, we need to say, I'm just going to say debug.log so we know this is activated. I'm going to say, we are fading in the pop-up. And then we need to end with the yield return. I'm just going to say, new, wait for seconds, 0.5f. And we are good to go. Now let's make the fade out pop-up coroutine. So I'm going to say I enumerator again, which is how you start a coroutine. Fade out pop-up. I'm going to copy and paste the entirety of fade in and basically reverse it. So first I'm going to put a code up here though, um, a bit of pseudocode rather, and say wait a second before we fade out. Because we don't want to fade it instantly, it will kind of look weird. So let's say yield return new, wait for seconds, and honestly one's probably fine, but maybe two just to be safe. And just so we can edit this, what I'm actually going to do is make a variable for this for you guys. So let's go up here, and I'm just going to make a header to keep it neat in the inspector, and say fade options, just in case we add more in the future. Serializable field floats, and I'm just going to say fade out timer. And actually, that name is a bit uh, not descriptive enough. We're going to say time before fade out timer. There we go. Time before fade out begins. That's super descriptive. So that's the, the timer before the fade out actually starts to happen. All right, so now let's copy all of this code. Uh, and right here where it says wait and fade out, we're going to say start coroutine, open up some brackets, and say fade out and then more brackets, and there we go. All right, so now we copy and paste the entirety of the code in fade in pop-up, and we change a few things, very important. So we want to change the four loop options. The fade is gonna start off at one this time, and we're gonna disable start coroutine fade out pop-up, because if not, we just have an endless loop of coroutines. Okay, so then we're gonna say the debug, we are fading out the pop-up, and we're gonna say float fade is equal to one, and then we're going to come over here and we're going to say, if the fade is greater than zero, fade is equal to fade minus 0.05f. And then Canva, canvas group alpha is equal to fade. And then we're going to say, if fade is less than or equal to 0.05f, we want to disable all of the pop-ups. So the next time another fade starts, we don't have one overlapping each other. And then save that. All right, we are progressing very nicely. Now we have to know which pop-up to enable, depending on your character's health. So let's get to doing that. First, we're gonna say public void display health pop-up. And then we're going to need this to pass an integer for the character's health. And specifically, since I'm actually using a value between one and 100, I'm actually gonna say player health percentage. So I'm gonna say if the player health is equal or greater than or equal to 100%, then I'm just gonna change the name of this variable first. So it's, again, very descriptive. I'm just gonna say player health percentage. You don't need to do this. Uh, and then I'm gonna say in here, rule we want to enable the pop-up find full. So I'm gonna say pop-up find full dot set active. And then we're gonna say true. And likewise, now go through all of your pop-ups. So we're gonna use an else if statement below this. We want to say else if, if we are Greater than or equal to 66 and less than 99, less than or equal to 99, well, we know we want the pop-up fine damaged. So basically, whatever percentage of health you want this pop-up to pop up in your game, you don't need to use the same values as I am. Have at it and really 
be creative as you want to. Uh, you just want to basically put the parameters in these if statements and then choose the pop-up you want to enable. So for fine but damaged, I'm going to say that's uh, greater than or equal to 66 health and then less than or equal to 99. And then for caution, I'm going to say it's greater than or equal to 30% of your health and less than or equal to 65%. And then finally, danger will be um, greater or equal to 1% of your health and less than or equal to 29%. So there's no overlapping here. And if there is, it is a mistake. <laughs> so then lastly, I'm going to say popup danger dot set active true. And now lastly, we need to actually call this every time our character is damaged. So that's simple enough. Let's actually at the bottom before we go though, before I forget, make sure you hit start coroutine or type start coroutine fade in popup because no matter what health you're on right now, we're going to fade in a pop-up. All right, so over here now, let's minimize this and let's actually head to the, um, the pop-ups here and disable them all. Disable the game objects by unchecking them. And then go to Canvas and open up your player UI manager. Now let's make a variable for status pop-ups UI, which is a script we just made. I'm gonna call it status pop-ups UI. And then on awake, I'm going to say status popups UI equals get component in children because this sits on the game object of an object under this. It is a child of the parent of this game object. So then let's go over here. I'm actually going to go back into the script real quick. And I am going to right above this reference our player manager. I'm just going to call that player. And now since there's only one in the scene, you could um, just make this a static variable. But for now, I'm just going to say player equals find object of type player manager. We'll change that in the future, but there is only one player in the scene. There should always only be one, so this should never give you an issue. Next, I am going to come right below this, and I'm going to say public void display health pop-up, just like the same name we called it in the status pop-ups UI. And then I'm going to say status pop-ups UI dot display health pop-up. And for the variable or the uh, integer variable that we need, I'm going to pass the player dot player stats manager dot player health. And there we go. Okay, now we need to call this function, which we can do. Let's go to our player stat manager and find where we get damaged. Here we go. Take damage from grapple is the only one we have right now. Now we don't want to play this if we're dead. So let's put an else statement here. If the player health is less than or equal to zero, kill player else. We're going to say player as in player manager dot player UI manager dot display health pop up. And we're going to save. All right. So now if I go into the game and I let this gentleman run at me and grab me, we should see a pop up when our health changes. So there he goes. He grabs me, takes a chomp. Boom. Yes. Fine. Okay. That is working as intended. Now there's no cool heart monitor effects, however. So we want to change that. Let's make it so we actually see a heart monitor effect. The first thing we're going to do is make a second camera. This is because we can't render particle effects on the UI unless we do this. So I'm going to call it UI camera. Now, I'm going to just drag this on the top for neatness sake. And the first thing I want to do is come over here and remove the audio listener. This is because we already have one on our main camera. We do not need to. I'm going to change it, the projection from orthographic or perspective, sorry, to orthographic and the clear flags to depth only. And lastly, I'm going to change the culling mask to nothing and then UI. So it's only rendering the UI. All right. So now we're going to change how our canvas is handled. Let's click on our canvas. And right now we have screen space overlay. Change it to screen space camera and drag in your UI camera. There we go. All right. Next, I'm going to rename the canvas to player UI. I'm going to drag the player UI up here just again for neatness sake. Now, under status pop-ups, let's figure out how to animate these. So what I'm going to do is enable them one at a time. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys one for the example. Let's change the alpha to one so we can see it in the canvas group. And here we go. So I'm going to right click, make a new image. I'm just going to call this or resize it rather to something like, let's try 25 by 25. Now it's still too big, 15 by 15. Uh, that looks okay. Let's make it into a knob, which is a default image in Unity. I'm going to change it to 10 by 10. Okay, that looks perfect. I'm going to match the color to the text just because I think that looks like the best. You can do whatever you want. And now I'm going to drag this uh, after renaming it heart rate knob. I'll bring it to the far left of the image right in the middle where I think it would start on a heart monitor, just like that. Okay, so now we have to animate this little knob, which is very easy, actually. So 
What we're going to do is select the parents, which is just in my case, fine, and go to window animation animation. Then hit this create button and I'm gonna call this fine underscore, actually heart monitor, heart underscore rate underscore monitor underscore fine underscore full. And that will be the animation name. I will save that. And then hit this little red circle here on top of this. And then hit the knob. And whenever, you're gonna notice when we move it, watch what happens. We get a keyframe. So if I just move it a tiny bit, boom, there's a keyframe. And what you can do is, is drag these keyframes over and then move it a little bit every three or four frames. And just do this and do your best to mimic a, um, a heart rate monitor. I'm just going to do some random movements here. I'm sure if you took the time to actually look at the way um, one looks in an image, you could get a really nice looking effect. And I know what you're thinking, well, this is just going to be a little ball moving on the screen. But what we're going to do is actually add a particle tracer to this. So wherever this moves, we get a cool particle effect that will trace the line of it. So what I'm going to do now is move this to the best of my ability to mimic something of a heart monitor. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I encourage you to take all the time you want. You can make this look really cool. And also for further information on the making your UI um, be able to display particle effects, I will link a video in the description if you want any more in-depth explanation for that. So I'm just gonna move this again to the best of my ability, but that's why we have the two cameras set up because this UI camera is only rendering the UI. And because of the way we have it set up, we can now also show particle effects on this UI camera if they have the layer of UI. And we're going to use the particle effects themselves to mimic a trail on this heart rate monitor. So I almost have this done here now. I'm just trying to do it some justice so it looks um, a little bit neat here at least. And you want to do this for each of your um, status pop-ups. So find full, find slightly damaged, caution, and danger. You can make caution and danger look a little more sporadic if you want to, just to give them uh, you know, a bit of difference. And you can make fine look more stable and healthy. And that's the idea. And it adds uh, a lot of effect for the little bit of time you can sink into this. So when you're done, just stop it right on the edge of the bar here like that. And there we go. Okay, so now when you're done, hit this little red circle to stop the animation recording and press X. And now I'm going to uncheck loop time. I don't want it to loop personally. If you want to though, you can do that. And now under here, you'll see that now has an animator component. And if we start the game, you'll see that this little circle does whatever I just animated it to do, which is cool, it's working, great. Now right click on it and go to effects and click particle system. And this is gonna look nothing like you want it to at first. So under here, I'm going to change the start speed to something very slow, like 0 0.01. Honestly, we want the animation to be really carrying the particle here. So 0 0.01. Okay. That's a lot better or 0 0.1 rather, um, for the start size and the start speed is 0 0.01. So my size again, 0 0.1, my start speed, 0 0.01. Uh, I'm then going to check the gravity. That looks fine. The emission now rate over time, zero rate over time will spawn particles over time rate over distance i'm going to set this to 10 or 20. this will spawn particles as this object moves so check this out if i highlight both at the same time and then i move this little knob you can see look at that as i'm moving the particles spawn and if i stop they will stop spawning and then they will start to disappear so because this thing is moving with animation as this moves we want the particles to spawn now that is cool but it still it looks like it's all over the place so let's condense it more so let's go back to the particle system and come down here and go to shape. And first I want to set this to a circle. You can use a sphere too, but where this is 2D, I'm going to use a circle. Uh, and then I want to set the radius something very tiny. So 0 0.1 or even 0 0.01 honestly would probably be really good. So we'll try that first. Um, and again, play around this all you want, but as you can see now it's turning on, you can see the little orange uh, outline as we move it. That's good. Now let's go to color over lifetime. And I want to make this look really bright green and then kind of fade out to a lighter green or almost like a white. So play around with this. I'm gonna make it match my text color because I think that looks cool. And then I'm going to fade it out to something that's uh, a little lighter, maybe even, maybe even significantly lighter just to make it look a little different. So I'm just gonna crank this up here. And then this top little white tag, you can actually make the alpha fade out over time. So it starts off fully uh, opaque and then it will actually get more transparent as it goes on. It makes it look really ghosty and nice. I think this is a very cool effect. Again, play around with these values, take your time. You won't get this to uh, look nice probably the first couple times around the more you tweak it uh, the better it will look over time So I'm just gonna play around with the colors a little bit I won't spend too much time because the point of this video again is the education not the actual uh, um, Polishing of the UI right now. 
Okay, so that is, uh, that's done. Now, what we wanna do is make sure it's a little bit in front of the image here, just a little bit, because if not, you might not see it. It might get caught behind the UI. And then come over here and make sure you set the simulation space to world, that is important. And now you can see, boom, there we go, look at that. It looks a lot better. Now you could keep tweaking this all you want. I didn't wanna to spend too much time on the particles themselves, but you can make this look really cool. Also, you can tweak the animation speed in here. Uh, just set the animation speed to whatever you want, 0 0.5 to one. If I press play, you get this, and that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Ignore my not too great heart monitor effect, but yeah, I like that. So we still gotta do a few more things. I am going to come in here on the particle system. If you change the rate over distance to a higher number, you will see that it actually gets thicker and more dense. So play with that as you want to as well. Check this out. There you go. There's a lot less spacing between the particles, which is cool. All right, so now I'm going to copy the heart rate knob and I'm gonna disable this game object of fine. I'm gonna enable fine damage, caution, and danger and paste them all as children. And now what you wanna do is change the, um, the color of the particles and the color of the knob to match the color of this pop-up which won't take you very long. Uh, and then if you want to, you can actually use the same animation you used for the first one um, in this, or you can make a separate animation for each of these game objects. I am going to make a separate animation for danger and caution and use the same animation for fine, most likely. So what you wanna do is do the same thing, go in here, highlight the object, um, click animation window, animate, give it a name, hit the red uh, icon here, grab the knob and move it wherever you want to. That will create a keyframe. The process is the same for all of these. Just really make it look however you want it to look. And then when you're done, you can come in here now and hit play. And if I run over to this gentleman and let him damage me, I will show you the end result. So go and grab me. I'll do 33 damage. That brings you down to uh, 67. And there we go. I'm on fine. He grabs me again. This should bring me down to caution. Boom, there we go, we're on caution, excellent. And now if I let him grab me again, he bites me and there is danger. There we go, and that looks awesome. So I use the same animation for all these just for the demonstration purposes. But again, I encourage you to tweak it and make it look how you want. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate a like and a comment. It helps out my series so much. And I wanna thank my patrons. It's because of you, I get to keep doing this and I really, really enjoy doing this. So in the next video, we're gonna cover basic attacks like scratches that won't include grappling and we're gonna further expand upon these systems. I'm really liking how this project is shaping up, so I will see you guys in the next one.